thank you so much for the warm welcome. Pleasure uh, meeting all of you, my friends. Uh, it's been a while since we connected. My name is Apulak and super excited to walk you through a small presentation today. I know we have a stellar panel post this and I'm personally really excited to do that. Uh, but before that, I just thought, you know, let me just walk you through how, you know, we at Think Deal uh, look at this, this topic. You know, I know when we speak about workspace modernization, you know, when we talk about evolving workforce, I think this is a topic which has been done and dusted because during the pandemic, everybody seems to have spoken so much about, you know, workspace modernization. So we thought of doing one thing today. We thought of taking one aspect of, you know, workspace modernization, pivot around that and see whether we can make this discussion fruitful. So today we are going to talk about how, you know, how workspace modernization pivots with uh, boosting productivity. So, you know, that's the, the core uh, fulcrum of today's conversations as we go ahead. Right. So without further ado, let me jump right in. You know, when we speak about, you know, workforce, as you all are aware, I, I like to use the term pandemic induced because, you know, there were two sets of way we work, you know, uh, because I think the way we work, the, the transformation and the evolution is to make sure that we do work in a better way, in a secure way, in a more inclusive way. So fundamentally, and I'm sure you'll all agree, how we work and how we used to work has really changed in the last couple of years. It's very important for me to point one important aspect is, you know, I've heard the term workspace modernization and I've shared this across many several, uh, other platforms in the past. When I hear the term workspace modernization, you know, uh, it's been there in the in, in the technical jargons for a while, but workspace modernization efforts are truly, uh, you know, uh, transformative. Became transformative in the last two three years, and that is why you know, and that is why I call the term pandemic in, induced. Because if you see in a pre-pandemic phase, you know, uh, most of us, and while I may not have the exact numbers with ourselves. But most of us, you know, work from offices, you know, collaboration used to be confined to conferencing rooms. Uh, there was no defined work from home policy. I mean, if you fell ill, if you were traveling for work, you had this provision of working from, say, a remote location. And, and you know, a device was uh, essentially a tool to connect and to get your work done. Now, do compare that with how we are positioned now. I know we had, I mean, touch wood, uh, truly out of the pandemic, but it is fair to say that how we work has changed forever and radically so, you know. A, the flexibility of work that we have provided. I don't think many of us are anymore required to go to office. I know there are a few industries which uh, mandates work uh, going back to office, but you have to understand when I speak about a flexible work environment, I'm not essentially talking about only two scenarios, that of office space and that of your home. When I say a flexible work location, it could be a remote location where your work is happening. So for instance, I'll give you an example of a real estate organization. Imagine you have a you know, greenfield project where a site is being built grounds up. The first thing that nowadays that you need to do is to have an IT infra in place with a w basic IT infrastructure of connectivity and devices in place. That also is a flexible work location, you know, that's A. Secondly, the way we collaborate, you know, there are standardized processes involved in doing so, right? Hybrid work is kind of become a default function now. And devices, I like to use the term is the new office, you know. Devices are no, not seen merely as a tool to get your work done. It pretty much is where your office is. So for instance, if you're working today out of your home or you're doing it from a remote location, it's as good as where your office needs to be. So essentially what does this is, you know, it's important that employers, you know, understand that the way work is getting done 
has changed forever, right? Which is why, in fact, we like to believe being an analyst firm, nothing resonates stronger than numbers. So if you see 77% of the respondents seem to suggest a lack of flexible work culture, very important, my friends, you know, 77% of organizations who were polled seem to suggest that if they don't get flexible work culture will impact in their employee attrition rates. This is a challenge that we have been battling uh, for several years. In fact, if you remember, if, if you jog your memory, back in 2021, uh, I remember distinctly, especially in the IT, ITA sector, we saw, it was called the year of mass resignations. You know, we saw a huge uh, challenge of employee attrition, you know. But I think wh while, I'm not saying this is the only way to manage your employees, but one of the key foundations of you know, managing employee uh, well-being is to make them feel secure, uh, required, accountable, and a way to do that is to give them, provide them the flexibility of working from anywhere, right? And the same set of people, when asked further, see, and almost, almost close to 50%, they said that technology will have a key role to enable that. So let's see how technology is, you know, changing the way we transform our organizations. You know, digital transformation, as the term suggests, this is not an ad hoc solution. It's a, it's a continuum which has been there for several years, right? However, I'm sure all of you would like to concur here with me that the processes of digital transformation have leap bound in the last two or three years, you know? The pandemic has worked as a catalyst for many, many digital transfer uh, activities in an organization. And as you're aware, India is a very, very cost-conscious, cost-sensitive economy. So whenever we do any transformation initiative, it's done only and only if you have a business imperative. So the digital transformation drive that we've seen over the last two to three years was dictated by how businesses have transformed and done business during the pandemic. Hence, you see you know, a lot of digital transformation initiatives in and around to increase your business agility, you know, uh, increase operations efficiency, and very importantly, and I think customers are king, customers are center of it all, 71% seem to say many of the digital transformation initiatives are around customer experience. But I'll keep the last two points very importantly here, are in and around employee productivity and employee experience. Now, why this is getting called out here specifically is because in our previous discussions, you know, over the last couple of years, whenever we spoke about digital transformation, we used to have other parameters come up. You know, we probably did not see too much being spoken about employee experience or employee productivity. In fact, if you see the numbers, quite surprisingly, employee experience is now as important as your customer experience. That said it all, you know, there's a American adage, which I remember now, you know, this, and I, if I remember correctly, it used to go as, you know, if you treat your employee as gold, they'll treat your customers as diamonds. And I think the pandemic was a, a, was, was a proof in, of that statement because all of us, uh, every individual, right from the bottom to the right, right up to the top management, we made sure the lights were on and business was as usual. So in a way, these are one of the foundation layer for the digital transfer initiatives that are being done. But having said so, you know, it's very important that we understand in order to achieve what we want to do, there have been challenges over the way. I mean, all of this, happened overnight, right? And we understand, you know, when we speak to IT leaders like you, you know, CIOs, uh, CISOs, uh, and senior IT leaders, it's clear that, you know, doing all of this has its own challenges, right? Uh, you know, right now, identifying new technology solutions to, you know, to, to acknowledging that whatever IT infrastructure I have right now may not be sufficient to create the workspace of the future. And, and also, you know, many a times, you know, employees would feel stranded and hampered, you know, when, 
when they pivoted to a new environment of work. So in order to ensure that we, we, we pivot to the new era of work, there's certain changes that are required. You know, uh, these are four which were listed down again by decision makers like you. A, 88%, that's a big number, you know. 88% of CIOs seem to suggest that businesses need to rethink their IT strategies. Because let's, if we take a pause here, when, when we talk about the office perimeter, say five years back, the off, when we talk about workspace as an as a, as a entity, we used to speak about the office as the perimeter of work, right? which was your head office and then a couple of uh, branch offices. Now, the perimeter is spread out across, you know, perimeter includes every and each and every employee who is logging in from their homes or from a remote location. So, and, and you need the necessary IT infrastructure to support that. So, clear indication you need to rethink your IT strategy, you know, to do that you need to standardize tools which enable that, you know, uh, rebuilding your IT infrastructure to support the IT strategies and very importantly, you know, redesigning certain business workflows, which which help that the transition. You know, and when we speak about redesigning business workflows, can we get now into an element of hybrid work? Now, hybrid work, like I said in my previous slide, does not compose only of an office, of a work from home scenario. It composes of any environment which solicits a work environment. You know, so. Let's understand, you know, that hybrid work, while it was a pandemic-induced phenomena, it was not contained to the pandemic phase alone. We see the merits and the advantages of hybrid work. And, and in fact, uh, to, to further boost my data, let me, let me share some thoughts here. If you see, I mean, you have to understand and acknowledge one important thing is, if hybrid work was a pandemic use phenomena and its efficacy was contained to the phase, then talking about hybrid work now would be meaningless. But what is important for organizations to understand here is productivity actually increased during this phase. So if you see, see, for hybrid work to continue, it's very important that both the cast members of this film, as I as I'd like to call it, seem to benefit out of this. Now, if you look, see both the employee's perspective as well as the employee's perspective, both of, seem, both of them seem to suggest that it has been successful, right? So if you see for at least from an employee's perspective, you know, we have 82% saying that this has been successful and employers also 77%, which is a fairly big number. And a very big number here, which kind of gets my attention is 71% of enterprises stated higher productivity due to hybrid working. But number clear indication gives you an idea that productivity increase. But the big larger question is, how do I make sure this, this number does not dip and it's more sustainable, right? So what is important is for you to understand that while hybrid work lasted during the phase of pandemic, but if you need to future proof it, and if you want to validate your hybrid work mechanisms, or, or you know, how you look at workspace modernization initiatives, it's important that you modernize and you relook your IT infrastructure, because otherwise it's gonna hamper your productivity. So again, if I take the story both from an employee perspective as well as an employer's perspective, this is how it pans out. You know? From my employee concerns are, you know, will I get, you know, too occupied in managing devices that I use? You know, will my employees provide me a safe, secure, and inclusive work environment? You know, will the IT team be adaptive enough and available enough when a troubleshooting environment comes in? You know, now you look at the case from an employer's perspective. You know, will my employees stay productive? Very important concern, rightfully so. You know, what should the office how will I make sure that my office and my work home location have the same semblance? You know, will my employee productivity grow? And if so, how do I make sure that I have reduced burnout? So in a way, what we're essentially trying to tell you is we need to make you know, 
the IT transformation pivot in and around the employee. Let's see how, how we plan to do this. You know, you at the center, you have the employee, right? Your, as an employer, you want them to be productive, yet you want to take care of the well-being. So you have well-being at one end, you have productivity at the other end. To make this possible, you know, you, it, while this could be a wish list, but it's impossible you, to enable that, you have certain sets of technology. See, every, every process, you know, has, has three elements as we all know. You, for every transformation initiative, you have processes, you have people, and then you have technology. So since we are speaking about technology, uh, some key elements of technology which will help us achieve that are as this, you know, A, the growing importance of intelligent devices. Uh, how do I, you know, manage devices from a remote environment? Because like I said, in a hybrid environment, people access their applications from anywhere. How do I do remote trouble uh, shooting, monitoring? Very importantly, how do I make my work environment secure, you know, and, and, and then I'll also touch upon preloaded applications and control-based support. I'll take each one by one, but more importantly, if I want like to, if I like to take attention to three soft elements, uh, which are not so much said, but I feel, uh, in my humble opinion, very important to future-proof our work policies. A, the tomorrow's workplace has to be inclusive, has to be sustainable, and last but not least, secure. I think a lot is said about secure, uh, secured, but I think special emphasis has to be laid on inclusivity and sustainability. Like I said, if I want to make hybrid work sustainable, it, it has to be ensured that people accessing work from their home environment, remote work, feel inclusive also. But that is because only when your employees are growing will the organization grow. With this basic premise, I'll probably quickly walk through each one of them. So I think when we talk about large scale deployments, there are always a challenge of you know, what the employee wants and what the employer can, wants. You know? So uh, from a typical employee perspective is, you know, how will the entire process of transitioning of new solution uh, onboarding be. For the employees, the same case, you know, uh, am I get, going to get burdened of supporting this hybrid work? For this, I think one service offering which a lot of our vendor friends have been supporting is in terms of pre-provisioning of devices with pre roll applications. A, it reduces your uh, manual touch points, you know, you get, so you have people joining in with their required skill sets and required uh, work skills. So you get preload applications as per the requirement. They're ready to use devices, so there's no time wasted. And you have automated, automated installations, updates, and configurations, making the entire process that much more seamless and making employee happy with the way work is done. Second, uh, like I said, a lot being spoken about security, so I'll not spend too much time here. But uh, fundamentally, uh, one thing that I'll definitely like to share with you all is, and I'm sure as uh, CISOs, many CISOs here in our conversation, that when we used to speak about you know security or cyber security, say four or five years back, a lot of the emphasis was around network security because, like this, like because all our work was happening within the perimeter. Now suddenly, thanks to the pandemic and thanks to the pandemic induced hybrid work era, we see a lot of emphasis on endpoint security. And needs to say because while a lot of great things have come out of uh, this phase of uh, digital transformation era, one very large concern that affects all of us is cyber security. You know, we've seen. Uh, exponential growth of you know cyber espionage, cases of cyber frauds happening all across, and India is no exception. I'll not take names, but the biggest and the mightiest have fallen uh, to the cyber attacks. So, three, four key elements that I like to focus on: a lot being said about zero trust. You know, zero trust as a concept. It's a concept, not a product, but the foundation of zero trust is you know. It's on identity and access management, so you, you give least access 
anytime, anywhere, you know, and, and, and again, the way we are looking at security is more, you know, AI based, you know, data gets encrypted and, you know, you're securing the devices at the core, at the OS level itself, right? Then comes a, another important element of, you know, simplified IT management. And why I call this out is because in a hybrid work setup, you know, troubleshooting becomes challenging, right? So for instance, you, if you take a leap back, uh, two slides back, I spoke about pre-deployed application. Now imagine uh, A, as an IT leader, you don't want to give access to one application to one employee vis-a-vis -vis the rest. All of this is possible through various technologies. One thing which comes to my mind is VDI. Now VDI, as you all are aware, A can be provisioned in-house on-premise. Another way of provisioning uh, VDI is through this cloud model, which is, I mean, you can probably take it through desktop as a service. So, but it's important that you use, you know, technologies like VDI because they're cloud enabled for remote monitoring, you know, so you get, you know, automated and quick upgrades and installations, uh, analytics uh, of devices, and, and, and the process is done, which saves a lot of time and manual interventions. And last but not least, uh, again, like to sp speak a little bit about automating IT support services. Now that's an element which has been a concern both from an employee and an employee because there are times because you're not in an office setup and let's understand office setup have, definitely has its merits because if you have an issue with your device, you know, troubleshooting takes much lesser time because of centralized access to the resources. But in a remote environment, it's very important that quick resolution is done to avoid any pilferage or waste of time, right? This is where I see a lot of importance of how, you know, all-in-one devices uh, or, P, uh, you know, PC lifestyle management is coming in. Predictive analytics takes center stage because, for instance, you have an employee who uses a predictive device and through predictive analytics, you, you gauge the history of work, you know when a particular issue might prop up and hence the resolution is put forward well in advance. So you're better equipped to face the challenges. So all in all I'm trying to say is when we look at uh, how we, you know, fundamentally look at hybrid work, there are various ways of doing it. There are people, there, is, there are processes. When we look at technology also, it is not a, a, a solution that helps you achieve that. It is a set of solutions which help you achieve that in parts and in the long run, maybe future-proof your workspace environment. So with this, I'll probably call it closure. All I'll leave you are six key points which I feel are important. I mean, they consider the checklist for you. A, do periodic security assessments because as we all know, when we talk about, you know, be it a zero trust framework or an identity access management framework, uh, it has multiple uh, authentication. That at time leads to, you know, loss of productivity. So how do I make sure, make sure that I don't compromise security? At the same time, I don't compromise on the user experience. Second, uh, you yourself are best equipped to answer how well positioned are you in terms of IT capabilities? Do you need to outsource certain functions? If so, which one? Third, uh, if you were running a large setup, you know, every application cannot be given access to every individual. That's where the question of centralized access and central management comes in. Uh, regular training and feedback always helps. Automating of processes uh, is on the rise. And last but not least, like I said, very important core to the belief of how workspace monitorization works is you've got to make your IT strategy sustainable, right? Well, I'll touch uh, upon all these points more in my panel discussion, but for the timing, it's a wrap from my end. Thank you for listening to me.